All right. So in this video, um, the reason for creating this video is I find myself at a bit of a crossroads, um, particularly caused with the updates um, with uh, Laravel 8, uh, moving from 7 to 8, and some of their scaffolding tools for authentication and being, um, you know, using Tailwind as, as their default uh, CSS framework uh, for creating component, components, things like that. Um, everything looks a lot better on the surface, and, and it is. Um, but as a developer who primarily builds out using Bootstrap or, you know, custom SaaS using a preprocessor, like uh, custom CSS building a preprocessor with a preprocessor like SaaS, it's a mouthful. Um, I'm kind of at a, you know, I, I felt that I was kind of at a crossroads here because when you look at the syntax of, of Tailwind CSS, and I mean, we could do that right now. Um... You see that a lot of stuff is now written in line. I mean, even here on, on the initial page. Um, and so you kind of ask yourself, well, you know, how is this much different than actually writing your styles in line? I mean, obviously it, it is a little bit cleaner. Um, but, you know, I, I'm really asking myself, like, you know, is it worth it to jump on the Laravel bandwagon or the Tailwind bandwagon? Or is it, you know, should I just move more towards writing my own components, uh, things like that. So so I did give this some thought. I came across this article. I thought this was a good article because it, um, you know, it, it weighs the good, the good and the bad uh, of everything. So um, now a little bit of context myself. I, most of my development is on the back end, uh, working with business logic. Um, the front end stuff I do, you know, usually I'm going to use Bootstrap uh, and Vue.js sometimes react but most often Vue.js um to to write components and user interfaces so um so yeah so that's kind of the context am i a front-end developer you know i'm competent on the front end um you know i can pull apart you know psd files and and, and put something together am i somebody who's creative no i'm really not creative when it comes to figuring out good, you know, good layouts and good uh, color schemas, things like that. So, so that's why I rely on a lot of these, uh, you know, CSS frameworks. So at any rate, I'll leave a, a link to this article uh, in the notes. Um, but it goes through a lot of the common CSS problems um, that you have, uh, some of the side effects that come from using CSS and structuring it in certain ways. So... Um, talks a little bit about SAS. Uh, my preference is to move more towards SAS, uh, though of course I have committed myself to mastering Tailwind um, for for the purposes that I need it for um, in here. So um, let's see here, going down. So we get to the part about Tailwind CSS, uh, a utility first uh, CSS. So you know, there's a lot of utility classes, say, for example, in Bootstrap that you can use, uh, you know, for the adjustment to your text, uh, text color, sizing, you know, margins, padding, uh, you know, how, how you can work with uh, your content in a row or column with flex, with Flexbox, um, so, so on and so forth. But this kind of like Tailwind CSS definitely takes it to uh, another level. I have to say, I do really enjoy the syntax of Tailwind CSS. You know, looking at it in terms of, you know, changing font size and how you would just prepend it with, you know, say, for example, SM and a colon um, in there to make that work. So, and some of the syntax is, is quite similar even uh, to what they have in Bootstrap. Now, like I said, right initially is it looks like a lot of inline, you know, like, like styling things inline. So here's an example the chat notification they implemented with Tailwind CSS. And, you know, when you're writing a component, I mean, in VS Code, you do have the option, like, you could create, um, you know, some snippets to write these out. But then that gets really hard to maintain, um, you know, in, in all parts of your application. So that's probably not the best route to go. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, a, a, again, like, it is nice to be able to write this in line. So, I mean, why I've decided to to basically commit myself to learning Tailwind CSS is, 
you know, part of it was watching another video over on uh, the Laravel Daily channel. Um, and in there, Pavel, Pavlos, I don't exactly remember his name, but he kind of put things in context of, uh, you know, when you're, when you're working with more of a component-based structure in Laravel, then, you know, to, to modify it, the components throughout the whole application or the various parts throughout the whole application, you just go to the components, um, you know, and you do that. And if you're used to working with front-end frameworks like Laravel, and I think it was introduced in, in Laravel 7 with class-based components, but I mean, you could do this in Blade components as well. Um, that would be fine, you know, which which is just kind of like a, or, or, or even just an include, um, you know, you, you'd have that option. So, but yeah, when you're doing it that way, then, you know, it, it you can style things kind of based on the component. Um, and so, you know, I can show you an example here um, going down in this. So, for example, I have xform.input. Now, a lot of inputs and text areas and drop downs, if you scaffold over something, uh, you know, some of the stuff with the Laravel frameworks, you know, they've already built in a lot of those components that you can then go and reuse in your own application. Um, how extensive it is, you know, it's, it's not, from what I've seen, it's not super extensive, but, but, you know, I'll give you an example here. So let's, uh, let's take a look at some components here. So I have form buttons. So these are class-based components in here. Um, you know, you, you pass them through like they were properties. So, you know, label, name, just like you would say, for example, in Vue.js, if you wanted to actually pass data through, that you know is more than a string, a calculation, something like that. Then you would just prepend it with that, with the colon uh, on there. But I'm gonna be an example of of what that looks like and now why it would make sense. Now, obviously, I'm reusing the input, the input, the select, and the button. And in order to maintain you know consistency and styling throughout your application, this is a, a nice way to do it. So, and that's really been proven with you know, how popular and how well implemented front-end frameworks and JavaScript functions. So, um, but let's go here to, to input, for example, and as to why that would make sense. So, I mean, this isn't the only way to write it. You could use like add classes. Um, there's, there's a function for the class that way to do it. So you, you know, you could do that. Um, but here are basically the props that you would pass through, um, in there and so you can see like if I'm reusing this component I have to go update something about that component um, or the look of it then I just go into the component and I can do that here and make any adjustments I want you know I, I could add certain things like maybe if it's a button and I need to uh, you know set it so that it floats to the right I could do that um, dynamically uh, by passing a prop through to make that happen either under label classes or or um, you know, kind of a Boolean value that activates that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can see here, it, it kind of makes sense. This could actually be broken down even further. Um, you know, label could be its own component, for example. Um, and then you're not passing through as many properties uh, into one component. Um, you know, you'd be passing fewer properties into more components. And that structure actually uh, does make sense. So um, let's see here. So... I'm going to have to find that particular class. Uh, let's see here. Where is that? Okay, so under app, view, components, uh, input, um, you know, you could pass through custom classes uh, through the constructor in there. I mean, that's essentially where your, um, where your props go first, right? So the props will get loaded into the constructor, and then you'll go ahead and you'll assign those various props, uh, the values that you passed through um, in there. And a lot of this, you know, it, it looks, uh, I mean, similar to even how you would just render out a typical view um, from, a, from a controller. So. so in this context, like, it does make sense. And I would, you know, that's kind of what I'm, I'm leaning towards. Um, the, the one downside with it is now... You know, it, it to me it does inhibit uh, development time. I mean, not so much development per se, but like when you're kind of doing an initial mock-up, 
um, you know, you're just you're just testing out flow and things like that. Now you have to go in and you actually have to build these components to make that happen. Um, but you know, with Tailwind, there there is also the option you can basically join a bunch of classes as one class, and I'll show this probably in an upcoming tutorial um, to create something like say a card element that you might frequently work with uh, in in Bootstrap, for example. So, so this is kind of I know it's a little bit of me rambling on here, but uh, I thought this was important because if you're like me, if you're moving from, you know, Laravel 5 to 6 to 7 and now to 8, and you're somebody who's relied upon some of the, you know, front-end scaffolding for that, that Laravel provides, then, yeah, it, to me it feels like it's it's it only makes sense, it's only logical to use Tailwind. I mean, there are some plugins that you can, um, you know, there are some, some packages that you can certainly implement in your project that basically scaffold it over to Bootstrap instead of Tailwind, but to kind of keep the integrity of the applications I would build, or I build, uh, I, I prefer to use what is defaulted with, with Laravel. Um, so is it a big deal using another package? No, I mean, you could do that very easily and continue to use Bootstrap. But there's one other thing that I'm really noticing in the industry, and that is that a lot of people are, um, you know, moving to Tailwind. Um, you know, it's to me, it feels like it's something between writing your own CSS and Bootstrap. But you're doing things, you know, again, you're doing things more in line. So as a backend developer, you know, somebody who's usually dealing with the business logic, not necessarily thinking of, you know, how sharp and clean and how everything looks, but you're worried about the functionality. Yeah, it kind of makes sense uh, to use Tailwind. So at any rate, at any rate, that's those are my thoughts on that. I uh, hope you found this useful. If you did, uh, you know. Please uh, leave me a comment below, like the video, don't like the video, do something. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you in another video.